Good. All right. All right. Good morning, you guys. Um, my plan for today is to do a little role play. Um, and what I had thought initially to do was to um, welcome Westland, by the way. This is Westland's first day officially as a member of the Productivity Coaching Program. And I think your second or third day of officially being at KW Roswell. So welcome. Thank you, Bill. Happy birthday. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for the welcome. Of course, of course. Okay. Um, so my plan is to uh, do a little role play today. Uh, and the, the idea that kind of popped into my mind this morning was uh, for buyers, for buyer presentations. So I had put out a, um, a request or a, um, a, yeah, I guess a request to see if anybody wanted to do their buyer presentation this morning um, with either me or someone else, maybe as the uh, buyer or uh, as the buyer, you as the agent and one of the other agents as the buyer and get a little bit of feedback. Um, I am, since I didn't have a overwhelming uh, um, response, um, if you would like for me to do it instead, I'm open to that too. So tell me a little bit about where you guys uh, if there's anyone that wants to volunteer to give their buyer presentation today and get a little bit, little bit of feedback from myself and from Candace and from everyone else. Any volunteers? Going once, going twice. I'm getting... Bill, did we get, did we get a heads up on this? I didn't somehow didn't get that was happening today. Oh, it, I just put role play on the calendar. So yeah. um, I didn't, I wasn't particularly specific with what specifically we were going to be role playing. Um, mm -hmm. But I've had a number of questions this week on um, kind of preparing for buyer presentations and how to handle buyer presentations and, you know, what to bring or what to say and these kind of things. So that was my uh, reasoning for selecting that topic. Is, is there another topic that y'all feel no. is more important? I would love to do it. I just would need a heads up to be able to do it, you know? Cool. Well, let me give you, um, can I, can I push you a little bit, Greta? <laughs> yes, of course. Okay. So if I was a buyer mm -hmm. and I called you and I said, Hey, I'm going to give some real con serious consideration to hire you, Miss Greta. However, mm -hmm. I need you to give me a presentation at eight 30 this morning. You, what you don't want to respond with is, well, I'm going to need a little bit more time. What you're going to want to respond with is, cool, I'll be over early. Can I bring you a cup of coffee on the way? I'm ready. Exactly, right. but I'm at the gym right now, so I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working out while I'm listening. So All I right. love that. No problem. You got to take care of ourselves, right? We only got one place to live. Okay, um, I will do the presentation then, but I first... There was one, I, I was, um, I had a hard time looking for videos yesterday when we were talking about our big why. And my computer has been acting up a little bit. So if I lose you, I'm coming right back, but I'm gonna try to share my screen with you real fast, okay? Come on, baby. Can you hear it? All right. I don't hear it. All right, one sec, one sec. I'm just gonna say happy birthday, Bill. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. All right, so this is one birthday. of the videos that did not, um, was not chosen yesterday, but I really wanted you guys to see. So let's watch this real fast. Thanks for all the birthday wishes, you guys. I, I love, I love it. When you wake up every morning, what drives you? If you want to live a life of success, a life of complete success, mm -hmm. happiness and fulfillment, you must find your purpose. You see, if you don't know what your purpose is, if you don't know what drives you, what inspires you, then you have no reason to improve your life. 
how can you improve your life if you have no reason to improve it? Why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? What's the reason? Why do you exist? Do you know what it takes to be great? Are you willing to go the extra mile? I tell you time and time again, you will get tired. But if you have a why, we'll give you that extra strength, that extra foot you need, that extra hour you need, the courage. Why are you different from everyone else who's trying to do the same thing you're doing? What makes you stand out? Why are you so important? Find your why. Your why will pull you up and you feel like you don't have the strength to get up anymore. Your why will keep you fighting when everyone else thinks you are out of the count. Why? Who are you fighting for? What drives you? Is your presence your family? Is it to prove yourself to Trump? Is it to prove yourself right? What is your purpose? Write down your purpose. Carry it with you everywhere. Feel it deep. Promise yourself every day. You will live your purpose. You see no excuse. Somebody is waiting for you to mess up. Somebody is waiting for you to give up. Someone is waiting for you to fall. So when you're challenged by life, what are you going to do? When you feel like you're at your lowest point in life, will you go in time? Or will you make the move to be successful? Don't look back. Just remember where you came from. And let that drive push you to go forward. It's not always going to be an easy road. And when you reach success, you won't take it for granted. You'll cherish those moments you had to go through. Those moments you were without. And when you fall down, get back up. Get yourself up. You need to find something that drives you. Something that no matter what happens, this part of you does not change. This drive in you does not change. This purpose never dies. No matter how many times life knocks you down, your purpose pulls you up every time. This is the reason I will fight for my dreams. This is the reason I will not take no for an answer. When it hurts, keep going. Those cloudy days, those storms, tell you to keep going. Those times in your life when you can't see how you're going to make it. Some things you can't change. You just have to live with it. But if you do have a choice, make the right choice. Your purpose is that one thing that lights you up. It's the one thing that will get you up early. That one thing. When you're doing it, time stops. Your purpose may be something you don't want. It may be seeing someone in your past and thinking, no matter what, I will ensure I never end up like that. Your purpose is always something that lights a fire in you. I will do this no matter what. My family is counting on me. My friends are counting on me. I am counting on me. All right. Let's get one quick thought on that video. Any takeaways? Anyone inspired, energized? I think uh, for those of you who have taken a couple of times that I've taught Master Your Day, I think that making that commitment to ourselves, I am counting on me, was huge because we have to be true to ourselves before we can be true to anybody else. Mm, I like that. I like Hello. That. I would like to speak. This is Sarita Reddy. How's everybody doing? Hi, Sarita. Um, Sir, hi. Well, hang on. Sarita is coming back to Keller Williams. She's been with us now again for another uh, week or so. And yes. uh, she's about to come on board to the PC program. So welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks, um, but, hey, hello. How are you? Good. Um, good great, great. Good to, good to hear from you. Okay, so on the uh, from the video, I'm currently driving at the same time, but I love listening to um, any type of empowerment videos. But what I the takeaway I got from that is 
we ultimately just have to make a decision. That's the only problem that every person has is making that decision for them to move forward. So we have to actually choose which direction we're going to go. Either we're going to go all in or we're going to do nothing. So just make that decision and just go for it. Just go for it because you never know where uh, your career is going to take you unless you step out on faith. All right. Step on, step out on faith. I see life um, in two ways. Life is either living in fear every day or you're going to live in faith every day. So it's your choice, your decision. You choose. Thank you. Thank you. That's a, that's actually one of the bold laws. Um, fear or faith, you choose. Fear or faith, you choose. I love it. I love it. So if you spell out life, L-I-F-E, yep. live in fear every day or live in faith every day. I love that. I, I'm going to love you. <laughs> awesome. Love awesome. too. That's why I'm back. That's why I'm back, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We also have Larry Cushenberry, who's brand new to the office and brand new to PC too. So we got some uh, we got some people here that are going to make some uh, some waves. So all you veterans, uh, make sure you buckle down now. Okay, let's do a buyer consultation. I'm going to try to end this as close to nine as possible because um, a handful of us are going to career visioning today um, with Gene Rivers. So um, maybe uh, let's see how it plays out. Who wants to be my buyer? All right, I'm going to pick somebody unless I hear from somebody in two seconds. Candace, you're my buyer. Pam, oh, Pam. Okay, Pam, you can be my buyer. <laughs> okay. This will be fun. We haven't done this in a long, long time. <laughs> okay, so let's pretend like um, I've already, you know, kind of gone through a little bit of preliminary questioning, a little bit of pre-qualification, and we now are at the um, buyer consult. Okay. Remember, ideally, we want to have a buyer consultation in a professional setting prior to showing property. Okay. Um, we do not want to have a presentation um, while we're showing property, basically. Like, so if the buyer is there and they're going up the stairs and looking at all the rooms and all that kind of stuff, it's not the I most ideal place to discuss the due diligence period and the financing contingencies and what you do differently and you know, try to get the answers to their questions about why this whole thing is important to them and that kind of thing. So ideally, you, um, you either meet in a public place, particularly if you've never met them before, right? <laughs> See, we are right on the same wavelength, okay? Um, whether it's in, a, in the market center or Starbucks or something like that, um, remember guys, there is no appointment and no commission check that is more important than your safety, okay? Um, a number of us have a, a program called Forewarn, F-O-R-E-W-A-R-N. It's an app. It's like $12 a month. And basically you can look up people's um, uh, background. It's like, it's not quite a background check, but it, it's, it's almost there. So like if you get a call from Joseph, you know, Johnson, and you didn't feel right on the phone, just send me the information and we'll look it up. And we've had a couple of instances in the last few months where somebody was like, eh, I'm feeling a little weird about this appointment. We looked it up and the guy just got out of jail or had a history of, you know, sexual assault or had a history of, you know, armed robbery or ID theft and all these kind of things. So please um, make sure you're safe, you're safe above all else. Okay. So we meet in a public place and uh, Pam is my buyer. We're going to sit down and I'm just going to go ahead and start. Okay, Pam, thank you so much for the opportunity to spend some time with you today. Um, I know that there's a lot of realtors that you can meet with, and I just want to express my gratitude to you for you asking me to, uh, to share a little bit about how I can help you, how my team can help you, and I don't take that lightly. Um, so I, again, I appreciate the time that, that you're giving me today. Um, I want to let you know a little bit about uh, myself, and without going into a ton of detail, I would uh, express a little bit about um, maybe my background or um, how maybe if you haven't been in the business that long, I probably wouldn't be like, so this is my first appointment, right? Or I've been in the business, you know, two and a half weeks. Um, but if you've got some experience, I'd probably uh, list that experience. Let them know how much you love helping people buy and sell homes. And th this is a great point where you might express the mission of your business, right? Or why you do business. What is your big why? 
So I want to I want to let you know, Pam, that the purpose of the Family Homes Group is to help our home buyers and our home sellers build wealth. And nothing makes me happier than making sure that you have a safe, comfortable home to live in so that you can enjoy the highest quality of life possible. And I understand and really look forward to that responsibility to help you in this major financial decision. So again, I don't take that lightly. So I've got a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind at the beginning. So what I'd love to do is to create an opportunity, uh, create an experience for you during this buying process that is a 10 plus experience, right? That is the best experience that you could possibly imagine. So Pam, can you tell me what would you say is the most important thing that can happen in this transaction so that when it's over, you say, oh my gosh, that was the best experience ever. What would that be? Um, probably the fewer the fewer surprises, the better. I'd like I like to know everything going in, you know, what to expect, that sort of thing. Fewer surprises. Okay, perfect. Um, just so I know, have, have you had uh, experiences with real estate agents in the past where that was not the case? Um, not not really, but it's just my personality to like to know what's going on. Okay, so few surprises. You want to feel nice and prepared and you wanna know what all the next steps are as it's happening, is that right? Correct. Okay, perfect. So I'm repeating and I'm reaffirming and tweaking the language slightly and making sure I heard it clearly. Okay, so a few surprises, perfect. If you could think of one more thing to make this experience a 10 plus, what would that be? Um, well, just, you know, how, how frequently you're, you know, how quickly you're able to respond to any of my concerns or questions. Okay, perfect. So uh, just so I get, I'm super clear on what you mean by that. Quickly means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Can you share what with me what quickly means to you? Well, you know, just within a few hours. I mean, I know that, um, you know, that you're busy just like everybody is and I don't expect immediate responses, but, you know, within a few hours, 24 hours at the most. Got it. So we're in a very fast paced market, which I'll explain to you here in a minute. Um, so I have a lots of systems set up. I've got an assistant and a team in place to make sure that you get the information you need right away. So I suspect we won't have any issue there. Can you think of anything else um, that's super important to you in this process? No, I can't. Okay, so as long as we go through the process and we have um, a quick response to your needs and questions, and you feel as though there's no surprises or very few surprises, that will be a 10 plus experience for you, right? Yes. Okay, so Pam, that is my goal for us, okay? If there's ever a time that you feel like I'm not meeting those expectations, I'd like for you just to give me a poke and remind me, hey, this is something we talked about, right? Sound fair? Okay, yes. Okay, that's my intention. Those are gonna be my top two priorities because they're your top two priorities, okay? All right. Makes sense. Okay, perfect. So let's review some of the questions that, um, right, I, I spoke with you uh, the other day, but now it's you and your, let's pretend it's you and, and your husband. And I want to recite or re refresh everyone's memory on some of the, the things that we're, we're looking for. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about your, the, the process. So how, how soon are you looking to be in your new home? Um, in three to six months three to six months. Okay. And do you, are you currently renting or do you have a home to sell? Talk to me about that. We have a home to sell, but we don't have to sell it before we buy. Oh, perfect. Okay. Perfect. So home to sell, but you can buy without selling. Yes. Buy prior. All right. You can't see this, but I'm taking notes. It's okay to take notes when you're in the meeting. It's act, I actually think it's smart, right? They, they want to make sure that whatever comes out of their mouth, you need to get down. You need to hear, you need to repeat, and you need to memorize. And this is the way it happens. Okay. So don't think that taking notes is like unprofessional. In fact, it's the exact opposite of that. Okay. So how long, Pam, have you been looking for a property? You know, I've always looked at real estate off and on at, at houses for sale, that sort of thing. Um, but I've gotten more serious about it in the last month or so. Okay. And have you seen any properties that, that you liked? 
Um, from the photos, um, I've seen a few that looked pretty good. We have a guest here. Hi, guys. Hi, Melody. Hello. Look at all these people here, Mel. I see. Okay, we're going to take a quick two-second sidebar. What do you have anything to share with, with anyone? You know what, guys? I'm so proud of everyone. You know, you guys are making it happen. And look at my mouth go. I'm, I'm vaccinated. And, and you guys are doing great. And keep it up. You know, don't let one bad person or one bad thing happen. Just keep plowing through. You guys got this. And guess what, guys? Hey, Sharon, Sunita, Sarita, how are you? She's back. Hey, Melody, how you doing? She's going to take over the world. She's back, yes. Hey, guys, can you do me one quick favor? For one second, and then I'm going to let you guys go. Let's sing happy birthday to Bill Linkwa. <laughs> Y'all ready? <laughs> take yourself off from you. Come All right, guys. Bill, happy birthday, buddy. Everybody <laughs> take yourself off mute. We're about to sing. We're about to sing, everybody. Let's take yourself it. off of you. <laughs> Here, take yourself off. Larry, take yourself off. James, take yourself off. <laughs> you have to say happy birthday, guys. You guys are so nice. Ready? Greta, take yourself off. I know you're walking. That's okay, Greta. <laughs> <laughs> Melody calling everybody out. <laughs> I'm calling everybody out. You guys ready? One, two, three. Let's go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Wow. We are definitely not going to be joining a choir anytime oh, soon. No, <laughs> no, we got to. We got to. We're in real estate. <laughs> uh, there is not God. going to be a PC the musical at no, all. There is definitely not going to be. I'm very grateful for all of you. Thank okay. you so much. Okay, okay. So, um, Pam, let's get let's get back to this. So, thank you very very much. Um, so, Pam, have you have you gotten an opportunity to go inside any homes? Have you have you seen any homes um, in the last month or so that with a with a real estate agent or an open house or anything like that? No, I haven't. Okay, are you going to be interviewing additional buyers agents, or where do you stand on that? Um, no, no, I I uh, as long as I feel like you're doing a great job, I'm happy to be you know happy to work with you. Great. How am I doing so far? <laughs> You're doing great. Awesome. Once they start laughing, you guys, it's time to pull out the paperwork. See what I'm saying? You're, you're building a rapport. It's got very little to do with what you say. It's got to do with what the energy is. I know that's a little hocus pocus, but there's there's a lot that can be said with how the, the energy of the two of you next to each other is. Okay. Um, so Pam, let me ask you: Do you have um, do, do you, have you spoken with a mortgage professional? Do you have you do, are you familiar with the types of loans that are out there? And do you have any idea with how you'd be financing this next purchase? Um, yes, I have. Um, it, it's going to be a conventional loan. Okay. So do you know if you're going to be doing ten percent or twenty percent down? Is that have you have you guys determined that yet? Um, we're probably going to put twenty down to avoid okay. PMI. Great idea. Great idea. Okay, you said you have a home to sell, but you don't necessarily have to sell it before you, you purchase. Um, have, have you spoken with anybody about that side of the transaction yet? Do you have, would you like me to look at values and you know, help you understand kind of what the, a seller net sheet might look like when you ultimately sell? Maybe that would impact your, your, your budget for the purchase. Is that the case? Um, <clears throat> I think I have a pretty good idea of what it would sell for, but um... I haven't talked to anyone yet about that. We, you know, there are a few things we want to do to the house um, once we move out. It's just so much easier to do it once we're out, you sure. know, so that we can, you know, hopefully get a better price for it when we, when we list it. Oh my gosh, sale. you're like one of my favorite buyers already. Okay, perfect. So as you, um, as you may have figured out in your research, it's a pretty strong seller's market right now. There's not a lot of inventory from a historical perspective. So um, um, there may not be, um, actually, let me, let me kind of scratch that idea. Back up 20 seconds, okay? So tell me a little bit about what the perfect home would look like for you. 
Uh, well, <clears throat> we'd want it to have at least the master on the main. Okay, master on the main. Yeah, and I know those are not as common in the metro Atlanta area um, as maybe some other places, but we would want it to have at least master on main. Um, Why is that important to you, Pam? Anything in particular with respect to master on the main? Anything? Yeah, I'm getting old and I don't know that I'll be able to do stairs for a long for a long time. I mean, that's one of the downsides to where we live now. I mean, other than our house is just bigger than what we need. Bigger than what you need. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Um, but master on main is the most important. Um, I'd like it to have a gas stove. Gas stove. Um, okay. I would like uh I don't want to be like on a busy street or um a you know steep hill for the driveway whether it goes up or down um and i like a master bath with a, a kind of decent sized shower not just the three by three so a larger shower in the master bath okay yeah it doesn't necessarily have to have a bathtub i've got one in my current bathroom and we redid the bathroom about four or five years ago and i've never been in it so Okay. Um, <laughs> is there is there is there anything uh, like school districts or backyard or basements anything like that that's important or not important to you? Age of we nine? don't we don't necessarily want a basement. Um, or actually, I'd prefer to not have one. Um, as far as backyard, a a little bit of a backyard, but I don't need it to be huge. Okay. Um, you know, uh, just a little place if, you know, if it had a screen porch, that would be awesome. So a screen porch I realize, is something you'd like it to like, okay. Yeah, but I realize, you know, that could be added to a house. Um, Absolutely. So, uh, you know, the bedroom's gotta be, the master bedroom's gotta be large enough to have a, um, a king size bed. King size bed. Okay, perfect. Are we trying to be in a particular location for school districts or for easy access to work, commute times, that kind of thing? Do you have a particular area that you're looking at? Um, school districts are not a concern, um, except that I know they influence value as far as when we when it's time for resale. My husband works in Duluth. Okay. He doesn't he doesn't have to go there as often, you know, every day, but he, um, you know, he wants it to be reasonable when he does and reasonable means under an hour to us or under 45 minutes to us. Okay. And we that was, my that was my next question. We must be right on the same page, right? I was gonna <laughs> say, what, what is reasonable? Yeah, I kind of caught that when you asked before for the clarification. Um, and we prefer to live on the west side of Duluth, I'll say, you know, the west side of Duluth. And is I mean, west, you know, west of Duluth, not necessarily in Duluth, but west of Duluth. West of Duluth. And is there any particular reason for that? Any, any, anything that, that's unique about living west of Duluth rather than north, south, or east of Duluth? Well, um, uh, our church is in Roswell, so, you know, we don't want to get further, that much further away from it by living east, you know, further east of Duluth. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Anything that you you haven't gotten a chance to share that you'd like to share that would help me, you know, make it easy for you to find the right property? Um, you know, not not that I can think of right now. We may find things as we as we look. <laughs> okay, perfect. Let me just read a couple of these things back to you. So we want a master on the main. Um, we don't want to be on a steep hill or a busy street, gas stove. We want a uh, bigger than three by three bathroom in the master. Um, a screen porch would be awesome, but not required. And a, a, the preference would be not to have a basement. Um, we wanna live on the west side of Duluth or west of Duluth because our church is in Roswell. And um, uh, school districts are not important, but we also wanna have kind of in mind uh, resale value for the more popular school districts maybe than the less popular school districts. Is that fair? Yes. Okay, great, great. So what I've done is I've repeated everything she said, the things that are a little vague, like I want a big backyard or something like that. I'm gonna dig at that a little bit because if you grew up on a farm, a big backyard might be 200 acres. If you grew up in Manhattan, a big farm might be you know three by three, right? So I need to know a little bit more about what that means. So if there's anything vague that she says, 
like I want a big family room. What does that mean exactly, right? Tell me a little bit more about that. Every time I ask more questions or repeat what they just said, it's more and more proof that I'm listening, okay? And everyone wants their partners to listen, everybody. Got it? Okay, so Pam, tell me a little bit about what you know about the market today. Well, I have read articles that talk about how fast, you know, homes are selling. And I've noticed that when I've looked on, um, you know, realtor.com or other websites like that, you know, that things are going, uh, that are selling pretty quickly. So I do get that. Um, we, we can make decisions fast. We're, we're pretty quick with decisions. Perfect. And it's also really helpful that you don't need to sell before you buy. We do have some programs available, which I can explain to you later if it comes up um, to help ease that burden um, uh, that I can help help you with. Um, but it's even better if you don't need that. I was going to show you a little uh, graph here just to help you understand kind of what is going on in the marketplace. These are some Chartmaster slides, right? So you're going to be buying in, let's just say, the three hundred to $500,000 neighborhood. So if the home does not require a price reduction, the median home is selling for 100% of list price. So Pam, if we were able to find the perfect home for you, it was west of Duluth, master on the main, the right price, you know, not a busy street, no steep hill, gas stove, all that. And ultimately you ended up having to pay list price or maybe even more for the home, more than list price for the home. How would you feel about that? Are you, are you potentially willing to do that? Um, yeah, yes, we are. Okay, good. So here's a slide here. I'm just looking for, okay, here we go. That shows that almost 50% of properties are selling at list price or above list price. There's a very good chance that, um, I'm not suggesting you have to overpay for the home. I'm just suggesting you may have to be really aggressive in, a, in an offer. I just want to make sure, like you said, you don't want a lot of surprises. So I want to prep you for that now. Is that good? Yes, yes, I get that. I mean, it'll be the same market when we sell, hopefully. <laughs> exactly. Good thinking. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Okay, so let me just take a quick moment um, uh, to explain a tiny bit about the, the uh, process uh, so that there's no surprises, right? So the very first thing out of her mouth is I don't want surprises, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to all of those things, right? Whenever I, whenever I can, right? Whenever I feel is necessary. And then, but just as a sidebar, if she were to send me a home that says, hey, I want this home and I know it's on a busy street or I know it's got a steep hill or I know it's got a basement, I'm gonna, or I see that it's got a small shower or something, I'm gonna reach back out and say, hey, Pam, did you see the 14th picture? It looks like that shower is three by three something changed? And she's like, yeah, but everything else is perfect. So I'm willing to sacrifice. I say, great. But she might say, oh, I missed picture 14. Yeah, that shower is too small. Forget that. Okay. That just saved an hour of your life and an hour of their life. And they appreciate that. Okay. Make sense? Okay. So Pam, we're going to go through, um, we're, ideally, we're going to identify the search criteria, which we've already done. I'm going to set you up on some electronic searches. And I'm going to be making calls every single morning um, as a sales professional. I'm reaching out to sellers looking for buyers and buyers looking for sellers. So there's, uh, we spend a considerable amount of time, just so you know, communicating with our database and in our community, looking for our off-market opportunities. And there's a great chance that I could bring one of those uh, to you, okay? Um, we're gonna have, when we go to submit an offer, we'll have our pre-qualification letter, and uh, we'll have a loan estimate, so we'll know exactly what closing cost estimates are and all that kind of thing, so there'll be no surprises there. There'll be a couple of contingencies in the process. One is the due diligence period, one is the financing contingency, and one is the appraisal contingency. I might spend a minute or two going through those, but I say sometimes, you know, it's not uncommon to have multiple offers, and in fact, it's not even uncommon to have 10, 20, 50, 100 offers on properties, as crazy as that sounds. So some of the ways that buyers are making their offers more appealing are the following things. So I might list increased earnest money, no request of closing costs, almost certainly no request of like home warranty and these kind of things, 
uh, a lower uh, number of days for your contingencies, possibly even removing the appraisal contingency or removing the financing contingency or buying the home without the right to request repairs or only the right to request repairs instead of the due diligence period, right? So I'm helping them understand that when they pick out the right home and I go, Pam, okay, the data says it's worth 320 and um, I was just told there's 17 offers, you may have to be a little bit more aggressive than 320. And by the way, if you go up to 340 and the home appraises for 320, they may ask you to come to the table with the difference in cash. Is that something you might be uh, willing to do or able to do financially? Yes, yes, to a point. Of yeah, course. we could do of that. Course. Of course. Hey, Bill, I, you yeah. said you wanted to end at nine and it's yeah. after nine. Perfect. I mean, we can finish there. this Monday if you want it. Yeah, so we'll probably do some feedback on Monday. Um, okay. And I appreciate the heads up on that. I was just continuing to, to go full steam ahead. So okay. what? So let, let's do a tiny bit of summary, summarizing, okay? So I've explained the, the um, what I do and why I do it. I've thanked them. Okay, well, let, let's go in order. I've thanked them, okay? I have um, explained what I do and why I do it. I've, I've, re, uh, I've asked them a ton of questions about what's important to them and why. We've talked a little bit about the homes that they're looking for. I've expressed some details about the marketplace. I have set some expectations with how they are gonna be successful and how it's gonna feel being a buyer in a seller's market. And I've substantiated it and validated it with documentation, right? With graphs, with colorful stuff that looks professional because it is, right? And then I would explain buyer agency. So I'd pull out a blank copy of the buyer agency agreement. I'd say, hey, I don't necessarily expect you to sign this today, but I'd like for you to review it. And uh, we've, we've gone over many, many times how to explain that. And there's videos on that. We can talk about that more on Monday too. And um, I'd like for you to, uh, to, to, to review this and sign it when you're ready. And the next step will be, right, I'll set you up on a search. I'll find a couple homes that we can go look at. Um, I might ask the question like, you know, what, when are, when's the best time for showings? Do you tend to like to do showings during the day or after hours and the weekends, whatever it may be, right? If it's a day and time that like totally doesn't work for me, like I don't work Saturdays, if they're like, hey, Saturday is the only day we can look at homes. I might introduce them to my buyer's agent or something like that. So I'm just asking a lot of questions to figure out what makes them tick. Does that make sense? I know we kind of got a little rush for time today. Was this helpful? Anybody? It's very helpful. helpful. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Okay, beautiful. So that's kind of the, the it's really good to have the foundation, kind of the, 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 the steps, right? The steps real quickly again are, you know, expressing your gratitude, right? Helping them understand briefly. This is not a, I don't even like the word presentation really. It's really a needs analysis. You should do most of the, you should be asking most of the questions and talking just kind of in between their answers as you direct them to the next stage of the conversation. So it's thanking, it's expressing what you do and why you do it, right? It is understanding what a 10 plus experience is for them. It is re, uh, reviewing the answers to the, the kind of pre-qualification questions for buyers. It's explaining the um, market. It's getting the details on what an ideal property looks like for them. And it's expressing buyer agency. And then it's time to go home, right? These meetings should last no more than like 45 minutes to an hour max. Okay. Make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, Thank you. Absolutely. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> okay. Uh, real, really quickly, Candace and I are working on a, uh, a big kind of program for next week. So that's why we've been a tiny bit delayed in giving you the week at a glance. Um, we will be sending that out um, most likely before the weekend. So hang tight on that. Uh, don't forget if you have not posted your numbers for the first week in April or any time in March, please do so. And um, I'm super grateful to be in business with you. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. We'll see you soon. Don't forget that a small group of four meets at two o'clock today. We will do that in here. Okay. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Have you as birthday. well.